So usually we do kind of final thoughts. You have a choice today. You can either offer a final thought or you can ask a final question of your counterpart since you're sitting over there debating all day. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Pat Borzi for coming by. It's Minnesota Made Me. It sounds like you can find the book pretty much anywhere. I know I've seen it on Amazon. Uh, but, you know, go to your local bookstore and buy it there. That's a better way to do business. Uh, if you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at talknorthpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks again to Brandon Morton, our producer. Please download before you listen and follow us at Talk North Pod on Twitter. Uh, for the live show dates, uh, details, special deals from our sponsors, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's start with Pat. Do you have a final thought or a final question for Cheryl? Uh, well, I asked her a bunch of questions before the podcast started, um, but I, actually the one thing that I didn't ask you is you still have an assistant coaching vacancy on your, on your staff. Um, you know, we talked about Jim Pete. I don't know if he'd be willing to come back. I, I, I think Taj is out there. Do you have uh, uh, someone in mind, and when might we know who that is? Yeah, and the the two the two names that you that you introduced here. Um, you know, I I've talked with uh, Jim Pete quite a bit. You know, through the years of of um, well, the couple of years that he's been gone, and uh, when I knew that James was going to get the opportunity in Chicago, I I asked Jim where he was with. Um, you know, enjoying his rounds of golf. Was he getting tired of it? You know, was his game <laughs> suffering and he needed to get back to, uh, you know, getting some scouting and work done uh, on the link side. And uh, I think Jim's really happy doing what he's doing. So um, he's not going to be returning in that capacity. Um, and then Taj McWilliams Franklin actually is employed now by the NBA, uh, the league office. That's right. I saw uh, that. She, she took on that, um, that great opportunity. So I'm really happy for Taj there. Uh, we have a direction you know that that um, we'd like to go in. We're pretty far in the process. Uh, we're just not in position to to make any announcements at this time. Um, but what we're we're you know we're happy with with the direction. I had spoken about this on the podcast before in terms of the profile of the coach that we really are interested in giving former players the opportunity to to be coaches. And uh, you know we are uh, a team that has three assistant coaches. Um, you know, we, we, in the, in the third assistant role last, uh, the last two years when James was, um, with us was, um, we had Walt Hopkins that we hired, uh, we've groomed him, you know, for, for two years. And so he will actually be, um, uh, moving up, so to speak, to, to be a part of, um, you know, the two full times. Uh, and so what we have open is our third assistant. And, and so that's the opportunity that I would like to, um, to have a former player in that role and, and, Things have gone well in our conversations with uh, uh, one player in particular that that um, uh, we'll be able to announce um, in, in the coming months. Let's say I've narrowed it down. The coming months. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for telling us it's going to happen before the season starts. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Cheryl, final final thought or final question? Well, you know, my favorite part about Pat is um, not just. Pat, my relationship with him, but it's who he partners with in life, uh, and that's Rachel, uh, his wife Rachel. And so I'm always intrigued by this. That Rachel um, Blount with the Star Tribune for Rachel Blount from the Star Tribune. Um, you know, is it hard for you to be in a household where your where where your your partner in life is uh, more popular than you, gets better interviews than you? No, I'm just kidding, of course. Um, no, <laughs> you're what not I, lying though. What what I was gonna say was, um, what is that like? You know, is there is there some competition at home sometimes about? Um, you know, if you have some th- some sort of breaking news um, that maybe you can't share, maybe you got a tip that you want to follow. Like, how does that go at home? Like, is it, is it a, a case that you go, Hey, you help me. I help you. How does that, how does that work at home? That's a great question. Um, I don't think we've had a situation yet where, and we've been married 16 years where I've had a piece of information that I couldn't, that I felt like I couldn't share with her. And, uh, I mean, for all I know, she's, you know, keeping a bunch of things to herself. Um, I'm kidding, She's stealth like that, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I, I think that the great thing about having someone in your house or sharing sharing a life with someone who does the same thing you do is that you speak the same language. And when your values are the same, um, you can have some very frank conversations. Some of the best conversations we have are not about sports. Um, when we do talk about, and we have a lot of great conversations about politics, about uh, religion, about uh, about writing. And uh, some of the best conversations that we have involve one of us, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're struggling with a story where we're, we're not quite sure how to crystallize it. And then you can, you can, you can have that conversation and bounce ideas off. 
and uh, you end up coming coming out of it with a better story. I mean, I tell I tell people this all the time that I've become a much better listener, a much better interviewer, and a much better writer from being married to Rachel. Just listening to her do a phone interview is educational and you know as both of you know and maybe your listeners might not be might not have picked up on this but i am from new york <laughs> and 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 often you come out of there thinking that um you know everything and it's it's very humbling to to realize that um you've got a partner who uh is gracious and can teach you so much um I also like to joke around with people. I know I've used this with Cheryl that uh, you know it's no shame uh, being the second best writer in my house, and I don't think Rachel gets quite the credit around here for how good she is, how smart she is, how dedicated she is to her job, and she's covered ten Olympics. And I think if you read any of her Olympic coverage in the Star Tribune uh, at the Winter Olympics, particularly in last February, where we had a whole bunch of uh, Minnesotans win Olympic gold medals. Um, I think a lot of the stuff she wrote was as good as the best stuff that she's written in her whole life. Um, and because she, she took the time to know these people long beforehand and follow these people long beforehand, and she gave Star Tribune readers a perspective that they would not have gotten anywhere else. And I'm biased as hell. But I think she does as good a job as any Olympic writer in the country and doesn't get a lick of the credit. And she has the smallest ego of anybody I've ever met in the business. It's amazing how she never – I entered one of her stories in a writing contest once, and she got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, because that's just not what she's doing this for. Right. I mean, she's she's doing it because – she likes telling good stories, and she's not doing it for the, to get any credit or anything like that. And that's, as as Jim can tell you, that's very very rare in our business. I know I'm kind of going on way too long here, but well, I'm, I'll just say you know I, I've worked with Rachel for 28 years. She was here when I got here. Not many people, I, other than like Royce and Sid, not many of the people who were here when I got here are still here. And Rachel is she's I would say she's easily our smoothest writer. You know, she's kind of the she's probably the classiest writing style. Not just, you can write sports without being real classic, without being really <laughs> smooth. You can, you know, there are a lot of different styles that kind of work, and you can experiment a lot with it, it, in the genre. But Rachel is kind of a, a writer's writer, very, very, very smooth, very classy. And I also I've covered a bunch of Olympics with her, and you know, I always tell you, Cheryl, and and anybody else in your your industry, that you people work like crazy. You know, you work ridiculous hours under tremendous pressure. You drive yourselves, and you know, there are a lot of hardworking sports writers, but I don't think it's the same thing as what you guys do in your industry. Well, when, when Rachel or somebody who's dedicated covers an Olympics, it is that way. It's get up in the morning, work all day, go to bed at night with 18, the 18 things that you have to do the next day in your head, get four hours sleep, do it again. That's what covering the Olympics is like, and Rachel's been doing that a long time. Well, yeah. Pat, I think the good news for you, um, Rachel mentioned you guys are on a year-to-year -year contract in your marriage, and so I think that just bought you another year. So you're you're in good shape for at least one more. Yeah, let's see if she actually listens to this podcast. This she's she's going to pick up the option, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, as always, Cheryl. Thanks, thanks to Brandon. For being here, Pat. Hey, yeah, thanks, 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 everybody who listens. And thank you. Thanks to both of you for having me. Yeah, it was a blast. And again, Minnesota made me. You can find it anywhere, but buy buy the real book in a real bookstore. <laughs>